Yeah, that's that's for sure. And you know, to be honest, like you mentioned, getting rid of that uh that control is probably the hardest thing because I mean, we're entrepreneurs, we are we're starters, you know, just by nature. So we like to work on things. We like to see things grow exponentially. And usually when we own these businesses, we're working on them 100%. But once you realize that if someone can do it 80% of the time or 80% of what you're doing, that's good enough for you to be able to expand and go work on something else that, uh, you know, more higher value activities for growing the business. That took me a while to figure out, but um, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, I love what you just said, higher value activities. Because the thing is, is that when you put that price tag on that activity that you're doing, because I don't think as business, small business owners, none of us have a problem with action. I don't think action is, is the problem. I think is that we're doing action on the wrong activities. No, so, I would yeah, agree so, with that. So, so you, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah I would I mean, agree with that as well. You the head on as far as that. Yeah, when it comes to like, I'll give you an example. So one thing that I do is I'm a blogger, right? But one thing that I do as well is called content publishing, which is basically the same thing. It's just that content publishers don't always write the content. And when you're writing the content and putting it out on the, the internet or on the, on the websites, you know, if you hire someone else to do that for you, writing the content is the easy part. And you can easily show someone else how to do that so that you can more value your time working on something to help grow that business even more. So I, I think we're on the same lines when it comes to that. Yeah, it definitely. Um, and the thing is, is that once you, once you're able to start valuing your time and saying, Hey, I can't be spending this time on this. I, I'll give you a prime example. Okay. Yeah. Is that um, I used to be in charge of updating my UPS store websites. I'm very good at it and I was very fast at doing it. I hated it. But the thing is, is that I was the one doing it. And so the thing is, is that I went back and did that hourly rate for myself. And I was just like, huh, I can hire somebody at 20 bucks an hour to do this versus me because my hourly rate is $500 versus twenty dollars so i mean so i could hire somebody at 25 i could hire somebody at 50 bucks an hour to do this versus me doing it because the thing is is that i'm making money because if i'm out doing the things i need to do my hourly rate of 500 dollars at the time um which, i mean because my hourly rate now is way higher than that um but but at, but at the time when i was doing this i was just like huh I've, I've got to get rid of that. I mean, I can hire somebody to do that. It's the weird thing is that, you know, I tell people to, you know, to look at, look at your life. If you have a yard, unless it is one of the things that brings you pleasure in life, pay somebody to mow your grass. Unless it brings you uh, that, that Zen feeling that, you know, that, that place to where you're able to relieve stress. If it's something that you're dreading doing every day, Spend the time doing something more productive. Spend the time with your family versus mowing grass. I mean, it's it's the thing. It's 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 just that cost analysis benefit. And the thing is, is that for me, I was I quit mowing grass probably fifteen years ago. I actually sold my mower. I don't, I don't even own anything to mow my grass anymore because I hated it. It was a chore. I mean, I hated mowing grass. Still do. To this day, if you want to put me on alert, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I, I hate it. And, and I think it comes from when I was a teenager, my dad owned a, my dad had a farm and we had cattle and horses and stuff and we had to put up hay. And I remember working for him and spending hours upon hours on a tractor cutting hay. So basically I was on a gigantic lawnmower cutting acres and acres of, of fields just and i i don't know the, the whole thing about mowing grass just drives me crazy that's one of my pet peeves in life so you know <laughs> yeah I, I tend to get off on a rant man sorry chris hey no i completely understand because that's one of the things too well, that was actually one of the first things that i outsourced like, quote unquote was uh cutting the yard because i feel the same way as you um, growing up, you did it all the time, and especially growing up in the South. I'm originally from Louisiana, so you had to cut the grass like every couple of days because it's just always hot, and you would cut grass all the way until 
November, December, and you have like a month break, if that, and then you got to start it up again. But uh, unless you get, like you said, that Zen like feeling doing it, which I didn't get. Now, now that I live in Connecticut, I do get a Zen like feeling when I'm cleaning up snow. It's really weird. I don't know why. And I'm kind of similar to you. I don't own a lawnmower, but I have a really nice snowblower and I just love doing it. Maybe it's because I didn't <laughs> grow up where the snow was. So I don't pay anyone to, to, to plow my snow, but I do pay someone to cut my yard because I can't stand doing it. And they actually just did it this morning. I'm so glad that this uh, that this interview happened now because otherwise you'd be hearing weed whackers and, and cutting grass going on in the background. <laughs> 